Hello everyone, it's Melanie. I've been making some little scrap, more scrap paper books and I thought I would show you what I've been up to. Um, hope everyone is well and ready to be inspired because I'm telling you, this is very inspiring. So, um, I made this book yesterday and I made it using a machine stitched binding technique that I learned from Arna and Carlos. I don't know if you are a knitter. I followed Arna and Carlos for years through knitting long before and this is the only real paper thing they've ever done but I'm gonna link to a YouTube video where Arna and Carlos kind of show you the basics of how they make these signatures for these types of books and then I'm gonna show you how I've been binding or over the years the ones I could find how I've been binding books using this technique and some variations and then I'm going to show you how I make these signatures um, and then in another well this will be part one I think and then I'll do a part two where we can um, go through um, ways to bind different ways maybe to bind these books because the options are truly endless so in the description box below there's going to be a link to an I'll put an Amazon link to Arna and Carlos's book which is worth every penny, even if it's just for the pictures. I mean, this book is top of my list when it comes to junk journaling, book making kind of things. This book is worth every penny. So I'll put a, look, a link to this book down below and I'm gonna put a link to their video. So I was, like I said, I was already following them because they're actually knitting designers. So I was following them for years and I saw their YouTube video and then when the book was coming out, I think I even pre-ordered it. I waited for it to come out in, in the US. They're from um, Norway, they're in Norway. So this is the first book that I made using that technique. And this one I made in 2016. And this is before I even had the right corrugated paper. I literally tore up a cardboard box to use for the and this is book, the front and back cover are pieces of another book that I parted out. So this one is full of um, other book text and junk mail, um, <clears throat> things that were headed for the recycle bin, that kind of stuff. There's some graph paper. This is just all kinds of stuff. And what I use this book for was, um, this is kind of like my portable Pinterest. Um, I would print inspiring images up from other artists. This is Mandy Patello. This is mostly embroidery and stuff, but there is some painting in here. And I would print these artists and put them in my book. Here's things from Sue Spargo, who's another um, embroidery artist. So that's kind of what I was using this for, was an inspiration book. So there's that one. This one I also made in 2016, but it's not finished. But the fact that it's not finished makes it really easy to show you kind of what the spine ends up looking like. So this one I made using their technique also. And I made it out of old pr printer paper. So this is printer paper from the 90s. If you remember when you'd buy these papers that had the borders and stuff on them back in the 90s for your printer, this was a big deal. So there's a, a bunch of that in there. I think this is actually... I think this is actually the paper I printed my resume on when I got out of college. But this is a bunch of those old um, papers from the 90s combined with some book pages and stuff. But once this is bound together using this machine sewing technique, then the next step that I would do, this is ready to cover the spine. So the next thing I would do on this is I was gonna cover the spine with some fabric. Um, not that piece of fabric, obviously, instead of using the cardboard, um, but I hadn't done it yet. But that's kind of what the spine looks like once you get it sewn together. So there's that one. Then we kind of skip ahead. These are 2018, I think. This one's made, yeah, August 2018. These are made using um, recycled book covers. Um, of course, the spine is completely gone. I just use the front and back covers. Same thing on these. These are made with 
paper from the recycle bin, stuff that I was gonna recycle. That goes, I mean, these papers go all the way back to like 2004, 2005. Um, there's marathon training, stuff from work when I was working, um, designing websites. So this is just truly assorted, assorted papers um, that were probably bound for the recycle bin. And I made this also using their technique um, with this machine stitched binding. Same thing with this one. I just covered, I covered um, old book covers with fabric. And then this one I used as a glue book or have used, it's not, it's not full by any means. It's got a long way to go. But this one is um, a glue book and it's the same thing. This is like junk mail faxes and stuff that we used to get at the office, that kind of thing. And you know, stuff from work, that kind of thing. So there's those. And then more recently, this is 2019. This is a book I made and I changed the method that I kind of did on the cover. This is one I made out of some book covers um, that were completely removed. You know, the spine and everything of the book is gone. But I repainted the covers. And then this book is full of painted paper. So these are assorted pieces of book, book text and composition book paper and that sort of thing. There's just hundreds, there's, there's a lot. There's an old yearbook. I mean, so this is papers that I painted individually and then I bound them all into these covers, um, kind of using this technique. And then I put some snippet roll or you know scrap or whatever on the patchwork scraps on the back. So this is one that I made earlier this year um, using the same sewn binding technique. And then this is, I think this, before I made this one yesterday, this is the most recent one that I had made. And I really like this one. This is pages out of um, a book I bought at the Dollar Tree that I went through and painted. And I was gonna glue these pieces of notebook paper on to, by wrapping them around so that, to write on, but I don't think I like the idea now that I put a bunch of them in there, so I'm not sure. I love the top of this one because it's, um, I don't know, can you see that? It's real, um, it, it, it's got the edges where I ripped them out of the book. But this one's the same thing, painted papers, and they're machine stitched. Let's see if I can find the center of a signature. Yeah, so there's, can you see that down the center? There's the machine stitching. And this one has a paperboard cover. So this is a cover that I cover, it's this, you know, paperboard kind of stuff that I covered with fabric and it has a three piece cover, a front, a back, and a spine. And I kind of faked it out to look like a case bound book. Um, and then it's got pretty end papers in the front and back. So there's this one. So let me get these out of the way. And I'll show you, this is the one I did yesterday out of paper from my scrap bin and that's kind of what started this whole thing was my scrap bin is overflowing so let me show you how I made these oh here's the other ones I'm working on so I made two more yesterday also that are in the process um, here's one that I put together it's even scrappier it's just little bits and I mean, it's every it's all kinds of stuff so this one I have the cover ready to go I've got the cover trimmed up and cut out a paperboard and trimmed up and ready to go. And then here's another one. This one was, they both dried overnight. I made these yesterday and then let, let it dry overnight, the binding. So now it's ready to go. This is literally just junk trash paper. I mean, literally. Am I recording? Yeah. Okay, so. This one is ready to be, the, both of these are ready for me to make the covers for, but I think I'll do that in a part two video. So let me show you how I made the signatures to put inside these. This is just some assorted papers from my recycle bin. And when I made these two, this is the first um, text block that I did. When I made actually all three of these, I didn't measure anything, but I realized that's kind of weird to tell you you know, don't measure whatever. So I was thinking if you wanted to, you could start with 
a basic size of paper. And I have a bunch of this old Joanne scrapbook paper in my scrap paper bin that I guess I tore out of a pad for something and then I didn't put them back in the pad. So you could do, I just kind of built this based on grabbing, you know, stuff out of my scrap bin and stacking it up. And that kind of created the size of the papers that I was using. Um, this, this little, this little book ended up being, it's four and a half tall, four and a half inches tall and just uh, three and an eight. And then the pages are maybe an average of, I don't know, five and a half, you know, by four inches tall. But I didn't measure because what I did was I folded them all. I, I made the signatures and then I went back and trimmed and cut. You know, I even used my um, scallop scissors to trim and make the pages kind of fit once I got them into this sort of stage. So my advice for that would just be find a piece of paper that you want. You say, this is gonna be that outside of my signature when it's finished. So I want all the other pages to fit kind of basically inside this. So if this is not gonna be the outside of my signature, I'm just gonna go through and stack up literally, this is all I did junk from my scrap bin like this and I used pieces of paper like this that were really tiny there's a piece a piece of notepad paper and I didn't even count you know like how many pages I was gonna put in I just stuck them in um, let me give you a couple pieces of advice that I have learned don't try to, to sew these signatures after you folded them you really want to sew it before you folded it. Um, it's so much easier. And when you stitch this on the machine, because what we're going to do is stack this up how we want it, basically how we want it, and then we're going to stitch right down the center of the signature. And you want to stitch um, with a really long basting stitch, pretty long, you know, um, and try to stitch it as straight as possible. But it's not if you're doing this messy version. It, it's not critical. Try to stitch it as straight as possible and use a thread in your machine that's a contrasting color from the majority of your pages. Because if you stitch with a white thread on white paper, when we get to the stage where we have to sew all of it together, it um, it's kind of hard to see. So this is a decent number of pages and I kind of vary the height of them and whatnot. But I'm gonna put this in the machine and I'm gonna stitch um, just straight down the middle. The other thing you wanna do when you stitch this is you wanna leave thread tails. I would say at least three inches on either side. And once you get it stitched, we're gonna take, I've got a different color in the top and the bobbin. Um, we're gonna take this and tie it together in a little square knot so that it doesn't come undone, which is gonna be very important when you get to the next step where you start stitching the signatures together. So you tie those off and then you're gonna fold your signature so that that line of stitching that you just made is right on the outside edge of that fold. And then I'm gonna press this, ugh, press this down. My, my stitching's not perfectly straight, but okay. So that's the first page. That's the first little signature. And I could do one, do one out of this. After doing, um, after making three of these books so far, I have to say my scrap bin is kind of going down a little bit and I love that. There's another. I'm just going to stitch right down the middle. So here's my stitching. And I'm going to tie this. 
tie the top and the bottom off. And it is kind of handy, I guess, if you have different colors in the top and the bobbin on the machine so you can see. And the other thing is, at this point, you know, you have these long thread tails that you're using to tear, to cut it off. On the little book I made yesterday, I left some thread tails. These I accidentally cut short, trimming another piece of paper. I was cutting a, trimming a piece of paper like this, trimming it off, and I actually accidentally cut off all my thread tails so I was kind of upset about that so even if you wanted to if you don't want these thread tails showing in your book like in this one they're not showing and but they're still there and they're still actually this long I just tucked them down inside the spine like that but I didn't cut them off so even if you don't want them sticking out, which for this little scrappy book, I really like them sticking out and I'm gonna leave them that long, um, but don't cut them off. So once you do this and you tie it, don't cut them off yet because even if you don't want them showing, we're gonna tuck, you would tuck them up inside the spine um, and leave them there to help the book, you know, for the integrity of the book. So don't cut them off. So here's another. together so the only thing I would say would be kind of um, a rule on making these signatures is for the signature that you're going to use the first signature and the last signature you want a fairly large fairly strong piece of paper so these signatures on the inside here um, they may, like this one, see how it's smaller. This would be a good piece to use for my outside signature. But you want to have at least two of your signatures that have kind of a strong piece of paper um, that's pretty large. Like don't use, don't, don't stitch this and then onto your signature like this and then make this the front page. You're going to have to have a full page to use for the front of your text block not like this, not a little one. So just some tracing paper. Oh, maybe I was gonna say, I don't think I've even been counting the number of pages that I put together. I've just been kind of going by what I think my machine can handle. <clears throat> But I did count in some of these others, and I it usually ends up being between five and seven pieces of paper is what I've been doing per signature. But I'm not count. I haven't been counting and doing a consistent number. And it kind of depends on the paper too. You know, if you have um, cardstock. You know two pieces of card stock in one signature then you might not want to put as many pages in it as you as you do one that um, has more tracing paper and stuff like that and if these threads do get a little bit lengthy I mean trim them just leave them as long as you can until you're until you're ready to to bind your book so like this book or this signature would not be good to use as the first signature in my book because I want a full page on this front signature. I just love using this tape this using up my scraps like this Let's stick that in there okay I'm gonna sew this one so I'll tie these off. This. 
Maybe we'll do this video in three parts. Maybe I'll show you this stitching together in the next part. I think I will. I'm not sure how long I'm going on this one. My reflector cut out so I can't see my screen. Um, okay. So here's four signatures that I've done. And let me show you how I kind of put these. Let's say these are gonna be the front and back. And I probably need to make, actually I could use that. So let's say I was just gonna use these four. Um, what I would do at this point is even these up so they're fairly straight. And I'm finding that in this kind of you know, scrap version, it doesn't really matter that the signatures are different, are different heights. Um, you could even offset them like that, or you could try to center them all. But whatever you do, just, you know, once you get it kind of evened up. So I'm going to pin this, clip this together with a binder clip. So this is kind of when I got to the stage where I was like, okay, how how deep do I want the average of my pages to be? So this is where I went through and said, okay, this one's way too long. Tearing that off. This one's too long. Tear that off. This one's too long, so I'm just gonna I'll cut that one back. This one's sticking out kind of far, so I'll trim it off like that. That tracing paper is a little bit long. And I have another idea for doing this and then cutting it on the guillotine so that they're all even. I wanna do that too. So that internally the pages are all different shapes and sizes, but you can just do this too. So the reason that I think it needs to be, for me, the reason that they need to be kind of even like this is because when it when you make your cover, you want to know how big to make your cover. Um, so you kind of need to know. So if you have anything that's just, those aren't bothering me, sticking out. Um, and then I can go through, even once I'm finished and trim pages and make them look prettier. But I just wanted to get most of the longer pages off. So this is how you put the signature together. And then the next thing we're gonna do, once once I have enough of these, which I'll make some more, and then in the next video, I'll show you how, I, how you stitch them together, which is also in the Arna and Carlos video, I, I think. Um, and then how I finish this off. And then probably I'll make a third video out of, um, physically making the cover and uh, attaching the cover. So I'm gonna sew up some more of these signatures and then in the next video, I'll show you how I stitch the signatures together. And um, that's all I have for today. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up below and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.